All right, here we are in Photoshop Elements, and let's go ahead and open Linda's photo. We do that by going to File, Open. I know it's in this folder number one, and here is the photo right here. Beautiful picture. We need to open a blank document. File, New, Blank. Click on the down pointing arrow arrow here for scrapbooking paper this is going to give me a 12 inch by 12 inch paper at 300 pixels and click OK. No actually I want a white background here so normally I open a new document as transparent I want this as white it is white so I'm just double checking that so we're ready to go. Now what I want to do is just drag that paper over onto this document I could have um, created the blank document first and then used place to get the photo there. This is just the way I'm used to doing it. Let's get it a little bigger here so you can see it. Now we want this photo to take up the whole document space. So it's okay to transform this and make it a little bit larger. Typically we don't like to enlarge photos because we lose resolution, but when we're making photos from papers, it's not going to really matter that much. So keyboard shortcut, control T to bring up the control, the transform tool, and I'll just grab this corner and bring it up. Just make this a little bit bigger. That looks good. I'm going to scoot it over right about here. I'm thinking about the rule of thirds, so I kind of want this tree it not smack in the middle, but more over to the side here. And that looks good. I'm happy with that, so I'll go ahead and commit that by clicking the check mark. Now this is a very simple technique. All we need to do is decrease the opacity of the photo. We do that by clicking this down pointing arrow in the opacity option here and I'm just going to slide this down to where I think it looks good and I think that's probably going to be just fine right there at about 43 percent. That isn't a magic number, it really depends on what your photo looks like. If you have a really light photo, 43 percent might be too much. So just play with it and see what looks good to you. I want this paper to look like a canvas, like it was painted on a canvas. And so I have some textures that I'd like to apply to that. So let's go find those. File, open. They are in the same folder. I'm going to use both of these textures, so I'm going to click on the first one, hold down the control key, click on the second one. That's going to select them both, and then click open. And let's apply the artsy texture first. This is one of my artsy texture papers. And let's just drag this over here, drop it on top. And now I'm going to close this just to get it out of my way. And what you need to do when you apply textures is just experiment with blend modes. Blend modes can be accessed by clicking on this down pointing arrow at the top and then just cycling through to see what you like. If you click on the first one and then use the down pointing arrow on your keyboard, you can cycle through these without having to access that uh, download arrow every or download menu every time. So I'm just using the keyboard arrow to cycle through these. Sometimes you won't see much of a change. Sometimes you'll see something you don't like. And so again, it's just good to cycle through all of them to make sure that you get the best choice. So I think I'm going to go up to, um, I like overlay because I like the edges that it gives to this photograph or paper, but then it's really bright here on the in the middle, and I also don't have the texture that I absolutely want there. So this is one of my uh, vintage book overlay textures, and I'll just bring this over here, drop it into the photo or onto the document, and let's go ahead and change this. Typically you can start with overlay or soft light when you're doing a texture, a grayscale texture, and then go from there if it doesn't look good. That's okay. That's okay. Let's go through the rest of them. Just don't really look good. Again, I'm using my keyboard shortcuts here. 
that's not too bad. I would probably do some other adjustments on that as well. Let's go ahead and leave this at, I think, overlay. And what I think I'd like to do is just bring this opacity down a little bit. And that didn't make much difference, did it? So let's go ahead and change the opacity on this bottom layer. I'm going to drop that down. And now we're starting to see this texture come through. I'm not sure I want to reduce this too much. Maybe just a little bit. It was a little harsh. And I think that's fine. I like that. It has a little bit of interest around the edges. Um, you could see a little bit of difference right here. There's a little line there that gives a little interest. You have some really nice texture going on there. Looks like a painted on canvas. It's actually light, but that's good because we don't want the background paper to overwhelm the photos or any embellishments we put on this. Let's go ahead and look at the final version that we came up with. And that's pretty pretty close, if not looks so maybe a little brighter right here. The thing about um, using blend modes and opacity levels is you're probably never going to be able to duplicate what you did in one image exactly in another image. So if you like, ha, come up with a formula that you really like, go ahead and write it down and then try it on another image. And you might have to make a few little adjustments in the um, blend mode or the opacity, but you'll at least have a starting point. So that looks good. I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and move on to number two. Thanks so much for watching the Sunday snippet. I hope you are enjoying these. This is the second one, so if you missed the first one, you should be able to catch it. Also, too, if you like the Sunday snippets, please go into our private Facebook community. I will supply a link below and let us know how you like them, and we will continue doing them if we get enough good feedback. Another thing, too, if you are a current paid member and you have not received your username and password to the new membership platform, please email me at info at naods.com. I'll also supply that link below inside the comments below. And um, I think that's about it. Hopefully you are enjoying this. This is Michelle Stelling with the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers. One last thing, I wanted to let you know that if you wanted to watch the full version of this papers class, you can go inside of the 2018 online summit and then all you have to do is click on creating background papers with photos with Karen. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.